What is up guys, AshPFC here, and welcome to the Game Pickups episode. Why did I just get out of breath talking? That's worrying. What is up guys, AshPFC here, and welcome to the Game Pickups episode. So, let's get straight into it, i got quite a few things to show you, and also coming up I'll be showing you what a monumental idiot I am, although I'm sure most of you are well aware of that. Now I'm going to start off by showing you a couple of books. Bear with me on this. Now, I'm not reading, never really have been. I mean, I used to read Goosebumps as a kid, but that's about it. But uh, not too long ago, I read one of the Witcher books, and I really liked it. And I said to myself, I should probably try reading some more books. So, anyway, this first book is called Roadside Picnic, which I think was written in 1971 or 72, something like that. It's pretty old. Uh, I think it was a Russian dude or something. Now, they made a film on this in 1979 called Stalker. Yeah, it was quite a big influence on the video game Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. So, it's only quite a small book, so I'll give this a read at some point. And the other book is Metro 2033. Yeah, it's what the game's based on. I think this was like written the 80s or something. I'm probably dead wrong with this, but uh, a little bit bigger. But again, I'll give it a read. There's also a 2034 and 2035. Um, I'm not sure if that's what uh, Last Light and the upcoming Exodus is based on. I don't know, but yeah, yeah, a couple of books in a game pickups video. But okay, occasionally I'll be showing you some game related stuff, so it's fine. So next up, I finally got myself a Pro Controller for the Switch, and I'm so glad I did, and I wish I would have got one earlier, because this controller is awesome and oh, so much better. This is honestly the most comfortable controller I've ever held from Nintendo. I love Nintendo, but I don't think they've been the best, really, with controllers over the years. I never used the Pro Controller on the Wii U. I'm not sure if they had one on Wii, but... Yeah, this is freaking awesome. Yeah, it's so comfortable. Such a good controller. It just feels way better, especially if you're having those longer sessions. You're playing your Xenoblade and what have you. Yeah, glad I got one of these. They're just kind of expensive. I think they start off at, like, 70 quid or something daft. That's mental, and then they come down to 60. They're now 50 on Amazon, which is still quite a lot, but, um... I actually had an Amazon voucher, 30 quid Amazon voucher left over from Christmas, so it only cost me 20, but uh, yeah, it's a cracking, uh, cracking controller, glad I got one, yeah, it's good. I'm not a fan of the Joy-Cons, holding them loose like that just feels weird to me, and I do not and will never care about motion controls, like, I hate motion controls, even when you attach them to the little thing it comes with, it's still not very comfortable, so this is the way to go. It's expensive, but... I'd say it's worth it. And also right here, I got a white PS4 controller, which came with my white PS4 Pro. Yep, I finally got a PS4 Pro. It's weird on my mind to suddenly decides on things, because I wasn't really interested in one at all for such a long time. How long have they been out now? And I was just like, I don't need one. I'll just stick my regular PS4. And then like three weeks or so ago, I just suddenly went, huh, I think I'll get a PS4 Pro. For no particular reason. I just have a weird fucked up mind. Not in like a serial killer, psychopath sort of way. But, yeah, so, I got a Pro, I'm glad I did it, it, it it's pretty awesome, I love having that uh, 60 frame second boost in uh, some games, you can also get someone in at 4K, which is pretty cool, but I'll always choose frame rate of resolution, but, uh, I think it's worth it, I play a lot of PS4, and yeah, I'm glad I got one. Okay, so, on to the games, finally. Now, I'm going to show you these all together, this is a collection of uh, games from a series. Monster Hunter, yes, I just recently lost my Monster Hunter virginity. So, anyway, right here we got the original game on the PlayStation 2. We've got Monster Hunter Freedom on the PSP. I believe this is like a... Just a portable version of this, I think. Call me out if I'm wrong about any of this. We've got Monster Hunter Freedom 2. On also on the PSP. we got Monster Hunter 3 Try on the Wii. Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate on the Wii U. I think this is like an enhanced version of this, I think. We got Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate on the 3DS. And we got the newest release, Monster Hunter World, uh, on the PS4, which I'm currently playing. And yeah, this is my first Monster Hunter game. And I am thoroughly enjoying it. This is really, really good. Uh, I think this will be a lot of people's first Monster Hunter game with it being multi platform and that. But uh, yeah, this is a really good game. Having a lot of fun, a lot of content, what to do, challenging, uh, great graphics. Um, just a really good game. And not a single loot box to be found. So well done, Capcom. Yeah, this is really good. I'm really enjoying this. So, uh, yeah, it did annoy me though. I saw a YouTube channel, what they called, Summit Culture. They described it as, I think it was like, Dark Souls meets Jurassic Park. 
Are you fucking kidding me? How is... No. Let's just... No. But yeah, really good. Uh, actually, I'm not too fussed about some of the others, but uh, I'll probably check this out at some point, and I will probably definitely check out this one as well at some point. But yeah, having a lot of fun uh, with uh, Most in the World. Very good game. Okay, so here's Most in the Freedom and Freedom 2 again. I bought the games twice. And I still don't fully understand how this happened, how I, how I managed this. I don't fucking know. <laughs> okay, so... There's a game called Monster Hunter Freedom 2 Unite, which is an expansion to this. Okay, so when I was doing the research, looking at what games are in the series and what I've got to get, I saw the Unite, but then I, I somehow got into my head that there was a Freedom Unite and a Freedom 2 Unite, and they were like enhanced versions of those, like expansions. But there isn't, there's only one game with Unite in the title. Right, but I'd convinced myself that was the case. So, you know, when I went online and I, I bought these, right, on eBay, and they came and I put them on the shelf. But I got into my head that I had these Unite games. Again, with one which doesn't even exist. So I went and I thought, right, I need to get the regular versions. So I didn't bother checking what I'd got. I just went on eBay and I got these two again. And then when they came and I put them on the shelf, that's when I looked and thought, hey, I've just bought the games twice. Then I looked and realised there's only one game called Unite, which is just an expansion. I, how did I, how, why didn't I check, why, how did that get in my head? Like, I honestly scare myself sometimes with my stupidity. I'm such a moron. But I mean, at least I'm aware of it. Do you know what I mean? I mean, better to be an idiot and know, than to be an idiot and not even realise. And have a bit of self-awareness. That's something, right? But, yeah. Thankfully, they were really, really cheap, so it's not like a waste load of money here, but still. Ah, oh, man. i got to sort myself out. Seriously. Okay, so on the DS, I got Radiant Historia. So as you can see, this is uh, an American copyright here. Um, because it was one of the many, 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 many RPGs not released in Europe because Japan hates us. But yeah, I've wanted this for a long time. Um, ages ago, I saw the YouTuber H.E. Bailey. Uh, do a let's play of this um he, he's basically he's been let's playing for ages uh he's like the king of rpg let's plays um i mean i don't really watch any youtube videos anymore but i used to watch a lot of his stuff but i saw him playing this and i thought oh really cool and i wanted it and i was looking for it on ebay and stuff and it was really expensive so i don't get it but i recently looked for it and i found it for quite cheap so i finally have it so i look forward to playing this and very soon in fact maybe even by the time you're watching this, um, there's a remake of this game coming out on 3DS. So I want to check this one out, then I'll probably play that one. So, finally glad to have this. And also on the 3DS uh, repurchase of Braver Default. I must have sold my original copy or something. Obviously I don't sell games anymore, I'm building a collection, but... Uh, I can't find it, and I had it at one point, as well as its sequel, Bravely Second. So yeah, I got this. This isn't... It's not mega expensive, but this isn't exactly cheap. Um, puts a crack in um, GRPG as a sequel, really good, so glad to have that back. Alright, Vita, so I got Assassin's Creed, what is it, Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation on the Vita. Um, I have no idea what to expect from this, I'm not expecting anything special, but I'll get around to checking it out at some point. Uh, it was only really, really cheap, so even if it sucks, not that big of a deal. Plus one for the collection. And I also got the God of War collection, which is God of War 1 and 2. I did not know this thing existed. Until I spotted it on Amazon, and I was like, what? God of War 1 and 2 portable? Uh, yeah. And I played it, and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Because these are garbage ports. So, so pissed off with this. What a disappointment. Oh, this, the graphics are horse shit, the audio is dog shit, and the frame rate's fucking cat shit. Just a giant pile of shit. Oh, so disappointed. This should have been great on the Vita, and they royally screwed up. Do not waste your time with this. Get the PS3. Uh, versions or just emulate it or something because this is shit That's probably why you should check reviews first, but uh, not happy about this at all What a shame what a goddamn shame God of War deserves better. It's bullshit All right PS4 so I finally got around to picking up Rocket League this game's been out for ages But I always thought it looked super fun. So I went ahead and got it and it is super fun I've played quite a bit of it and it's a really fun game. I suck at it really bad, but this is a lot of fun. I understand why 
you know, everyone raved about it. it it's a really fun game. I also got UFC 3, and I always feel really bad because when I get an EA game and, you know, it's an EA game, no one hates EA more than me. I mean, fuck EA, let's get out there straight away. Fuck EA. Right. Is that my first fuck EA of the year? Man, I'm losing it. But... Look, I love MMA, and I actually think this is a pretty fun game. This is the best one they've done yet. The first game wasn't that great. The second one was a bit of an improvement. This is definitely the best. Uh, they really improved the uh, stand-up game. The striking's really good. Uh, the career mode's way better, which is something I really wanted. Um, you know, the ground game still looks frustrating, as is the stupid, god-awful submission system, and the difficulty can be a bit unbalanced and annoying, but if you're a fan of MMA like myself... You'll have fun with this game. It's definitely the best one they've done. Um, still not on the level of the Undisputed series from THQ, but it's good. It is. Uh, but probably the last one I'll get, because I don't think much is going to change beyond this. They're just going to do what EA does with the sports games, stick another number on and the exact, uh, exact same thing. So probably won't get any more. And I said, I always feel bad buying EA games. I shouldn't ever give them money. But... Ugh. I don't touch any other games, I will never buy the Star Wars games, I ain't touching Anthem, I'm telling you right now, Anthem's gonna be shit, okay, it is, and then they're gonna shut Bioware down, I'm calling it right now, but, anyway, and I also got uh, God of War 3 remastered on the PS4, now this is actually good, this is the best version of God of War 3, it's awesome, better graphics, and more importantly, 60 frames per second, the best way to play this epic game, and yes, epic is the most overused word ever, but, this game deserves it, so, Awesome. Although, I got this from Amazon, but they sent me a North American copy. It's got the, um, the ES or B rating. We have Peggy. Uh, which is kind of weird. I mean, it still works, but, you know, you order from .co.uk, you expect a UK copy. You're playing at Amazon. But it's also got another language on it. Everything's written twice, once in English and once in something else. I'm not entirely sure. I'm guessing it's probably, um, f uh, French, because it's probably a Canadian copy, isn't it? I don't know, I don't speak any other language. I mean, I've barely mastered English. But, it's probably French, isn't it? It is French. Do you know why I know it's French? Enfants. Les enfants terribles. The terrible children. Metal Gear Solid. See, video games are educational. You can learn all you need to know about life from Metal Gear Solid. So, a Valley on PS4. Boom. Shadow of Colossus, the remake. Wow. This is like the perfect remake. Blue Point Games absolutely nailed it. it. It's incredible. It's incredible. It's one of the best games on the PS4. I mean, Shadow Class is one of the best games on the PS2. But this is just such a, possibly the greatest remake of a game ever. Up there with the Resident Evil remake on GameCube. This is so good. Alright, PSP. Not too many left now. So I got Final Fantasy 2, uh, the remake. Why do I have a feeling I showed this in the last episode? I don't think I did. Did I? If I did, I'm sorry. I don't think I did. But yeah, Final Fantasy 2 Remake. Uh, so now I've got the Fantasy, uh, Final Fantasy 1 and 2 Remakes on PSP, and they're the best versions of Final, of Final Fantasy 1 and 2. They're really good. Although you can't go wrong with the Dawn of Souls games on uh, Game Boy Advance, but I think these are the best. Also, I finally got Persona 3 Portable on PSP. Again, I've wanted this for a while. Um, so it's been hard to find and very expensive. I found it and it wasn't too expensive, so I've got it. And this will be, if you decide, this will be the first Persona game I play. When? I have no idea. But at some point, I'll play this. So, yeah. And apparently this is the best version of Persona 3, so. I also got this. Um, I'd never heard of this until I saw it on eBay, but this is called The Third Birthday. And this is the Twisted Edition. So I believe this is like a third game, or not quite a sequel, but like maybe a spiritual successor or something to the Parasite Eve games on PS1. Which I've never played. I always thought they looked cool, and I hear really good things about them, but I never played. But uh, yeah, this is this has got some sort of connection to those anyway. It apparently, did not go down well with fans. wasn't well received, but from what I saw, I thought it looked pretty cool. Some videos I checked out, so yeah, it was only quite cheap. So. And finally, on the uh, PSP, I got these. Uh, we got the Legend of Heroes 2, Prophecy of the Moonlight Witch, and the Legend of Heroes 3, Song of the Ocean. I showed you two other tales of sorry, Legend of Heroes uh, games in the last episode. And I mentioned as well the um, the numbering system's weird and confusing. Because like, the first was released in North America, the second wasn't, then at least the third, and they screwed up the numbering system. It went all weird. So 
to, I believe, while this is called 2, it's actually 3. And while this is called 3, it's actually 5. Because I think this one is actually 2. So, I think it goes this, this, and then this, if you play them in order. This is like a trilogy. The first two games are called Dragon Slayer, I think, and yeah, Legend of Heroes, Dragon Slayer, Legend of Heroes 2, Dragon Slayer. The second one wasn't released in, outside of Japan. But I think this one, then they released this one first, so they didn't give it a number. And then this one came out, so they gave it a number two. I think, it's it's weird, it's, I don't know, but I can finally start the series now, because I'm not going to play the Dragon Slayer ones. But uh, I'll, I can start uh, with this one, because there's a different story thing. There's different sort of story arcs, but whatever, so... Yeah, I actually got these, um, these are imported from Canada, it's the only place I could find them, uh, again, we're not released in Europe, and they were not exactly cheap, and um, what made it worse is I had to pay an import fee, sorry, a customs fee on this, uh, for some reason, but not on this one, even though it came from the same country, but why'd I have to pay a customs fee anyway? I've ordered stuff, games and what have you from all over the world, and only once I had to pay a customs fee, and that was when I ordered a Vita from Japan back in the day. And it, that wasn't even 17 quid. 17 quid! 17 quid for, for the... I think I got screwed over there by the customs office. So screw you, customs office! Not funny! But, yeah. Alright. Uh, nearly done. I also got uh, Dragon Quest Builders on the Switch. I've been playing this. Uh, just came out, and I love this game. This came out over a year ago, I think, on the PS4, uh, but I didn't really pay any attention because, as much as I love Dragon Quest, I just so it was supposed to be like Dragon Quest meets Minecraft, and I don't like Minecraft at all. Sorry, kids. Was that? Like, nah, not for me. But then they released a demo on the eShop, so I thought, oh, I'll give it a try, and I played it, and without 10 minutes, I was like, yep, yeah, I like this, I'm going to buy the full version. And I did, and it's awesome. I mean, it is sort of Dragon Quest meets Minecraft, there's no doubt there's Minecraft ness to it. But it's way better because it's got higher production values. It's more, I don't know, I don't know where, but it's got a story to it and it's just better. <laughs> um, you know, I don't, with Minecraft, you just build, right? It's just a sandbox. You just build. There's no objective, no whatever. So I like to work towards an objective and you've got a story in there and it's a lot, a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, glad I got this on Switch. Anyway, finally, sorry this is taking so long guys, I don't know I ramble so much, I do apologise. But anyway, finally, I got a couple of retro games, save the best to last. N64. I mean, I'd love to get N64 games and Super Nintendo games and make them priority, but the price is ridiculous, and I've got to have them, you know, in good condition in the box, which is even harder to get and you're more expensive when you find them, so... I can't really, but... And the battery's dying, so... Anyway, I got Banjo-Kazooie. Big game from my childhood, uh, one of the greatest platformers, well it's the greatest collect form platformer ever made. And who is it by? Rare. That that logo right there was a seal of ultimate quality, they were the best of the best. I miss those guys. Banjo-Kazooie, one of the all-time greats. And also, 007 GoldenEye, or as I've always called it, GoldenEye 64. The greatest licensed game ever, one of the greatest shooters ever. And this is the game that revolutionised the console shooter, not Halo, I don't know why that game gets credit, fuck Halo, it was this game right here. Amazing. Who was it by? Oh yeah, Rare, of course it was. Oh, what a game, and honestly, oh, this blew my mind when I played it back in the day, I've never seen a, I don't think I've seen a shooter done on console before. Incredible, and my fondest memory of multiplayer, split screen multiplayer, proper multiplayer, not this online crap we get today where you just hear kids screaming down a microphone. Multiplayer where you could play with your friends in the same room. That was multiplayer to me. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, yeah. And they weren't too badly priced. So, if I can find them, um, you know, reasonably priced, I'll get them. Um, but I've actually got a few more uh, N64 games. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. I've got six. They're not... Um, I've had them for a while, but six over there. So, I've got eight N64 games now in total. Of course, I've got the greatest of all time, and I would pay a lot of money for this because it's the best game ever made, or Queen of Time. Um, and I also got a very good condition Majora's Mask. So, yeah, I'd pay a lot for that as well. And uh, Mario 64. Not in the best condition, it's got some rips on the back, so I'd like to get a better um, conditioned version. But, uh, 
yeah awesome but anyway the battery is going to shut off any minute now this camera so yeah that's everything right there just about squeezed it in so um thanks so much for watching guys i hope you enjoyed and i'll see you later